off here with the origin of Cave Week. Um, so I started this initiative back in 2018 when I worked at Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Um, and it, uh, it kind of came to me um, because of my history of working with the National Park Service and Forest Service. Um, you can see that I have worked at Oregon Caves National Monument for three years, El Capitan Cave for a season, Mammoth Cave and Carlsbad. So majority of my career has been spent underground. Um, and a lot of times when I led the tours at like Oregon Caves and El Capitan, people would talk about all the different caves they've been to and they would always compare every cave to Carlsbad, uh, which kind of started getting under my skin a little bit before the tour even started. And so it'd always be like, hey, have you been to Carlsbad? Is this cave gonna be like Carlsbad? You should go to Carlsbad, Carlsbad's amazing. Uh, eventually I did make it to Carlsbad and actually understood what they were talking about and really have a deep appreciation for that cave. But I have a, a deep appreciate appreciation for all caves. And, uh, currently I'm not working at a cave park. I'm working at Grand Canyon national park as the cultural demonstration program manager, but I still volunteer. Um, I go out, uh, for fun and for work actually here at Grand Canyon as well to help with cave inventory and photo monitoring. Um, so I'm still deeply involved in the caving community. And this program was initiated because I wanted to talk about caves across the, uh, the, the U S and actually eventually the world, which we've kind of been able to do through this, through this program. And it started out as a social media based event, uh, as a seasonal or as a, as a permanent ranger at Carlsbad, that was the first resource I really had, uh, at my fingertips. So I used Carlsbad social media and started basically cold calling all these other national parks across the United States to see if people would like to actually celebrate caves for an entire week. Um, and the goal of all of this was to just promote caves and what is going on inside of them and how important they are. Share the stories, share the current explorations, share the research, uh, share how unique caves are um, and how they can link to people for, for water, for human history, for scientific research, I mean, everything. Um, and get the public excited about it because caves are one of those resources that are not as well appreciated or even understood by the general public. It's these deep, dark holes that are scary. They're claustrophobic. And people just always see the descent and think that all these cave creatures live inside that are going to just kill everybody, uh, which in fact is not the case, uh, as we as we know here in the caving community. But um, we want to get people involved. We want to use uh, the platforms of these larger national parks and cross pollinate and promote one another so that the other smaller parks across the US would actually get all of these uh, visitors that would hopefully plan their vacations around their trips to caves. Um, and it started out in 2018, just by myself calling these national parks. And I just went down the list of every place that had cave in it. And that's how it all began. We had about 11 park sites uh, in that year. It was successful. And then in 2019 to 2022, everything really ramped up. We were able to get help from the, or I was able to get help from the NPS Geologic Resources Division, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, the Forest Service, Caving Club in Montana, smaller uh, cave sites, Parks Canada even got on it. Um, International Year of Cave and Karst by the UIS was huge uh, in helping to celebrate all of this. Show Caves, the NCA. National Natural Landmarks, which are private organizations that work with the National Park Service. And we also had the NPS Cave Week website. So it really blew up. And during this time frame, I was still doing a lot of the organizing for all of this um, and making all these cold calls while I actually switched over to my new job in 2021 at, um, at Grand Canyon. My supervisor was kind enough to let me continue this. But as I dive deeper into uh, the cultural demonstration program here at Grand Canyon. In 2023, we hit a wall where I am no longer, was no longer able to uh, actually coordinate this effort across multiple agencies, private organizations, and in international form. So uh, the 2023, everything was kind of scrapped together with the help of NICRI, the NPS, 
Forest Service, BLM, all the people on this call that helped to organize all this seriously had my back in helping to create something at the very last moment. Um, and it's now taken form where I'm kind of the face of it in a way because I created it, but uh, I'm still involved to some degree. And Nickery uh, is really uh, taking over on this and helping a lot in order to organize Cave Week and take it to levels that I was not able to as a, um, a park ranger, as like a GS5 when I started this organization. So for 2024 and into the future, Hopefully we're looking at like the UIS, these government agencies that we've had for so long, the National Speedological Society, the NCA um, and public caves to uh, celebrate every year. We've got themes that are going on, like the cave animals, um, different scientific approaches we could take to celebrating um, different ways people can get into cave systems. Um, include cave sim if possible. Uh, Dave Jackson is a wonderful guy and would be a valuable resource for anybody to um, get involved with. Find new audiences, uh, inspire everyone to cave appropriately and safely through different organizations or different clubs. Uh, and hopefully that comes down to protecting and uh, saving uh, karst resources. So it's grown since 2018 when I created this as just a single person and I'm very grateful for everyone that's on board of this today um, and it I, I love seeing everyone here and it's it's a great thing to, to watch grow and actually see it be taken over and expand in ways that I never could. Um, so thank you very much everybody for actually who's on the call and celebrating caves and cave week because it's uh, it's kind of a dream come true to get it to this point with everybody involved. Um, but with that, um, I would love to, to turn it over to folks who really have uh, the, the means of what to share today and, uh, and help with, with everything. Um, so I'm stopping my share screen here and I'm going to turn everything over to Lima Soto from the United States Forest Service and Tommy and Nebit uh, from the Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes, so thank you, Dan, for that introduction. And um, I'm Lima Soto, I'm the National Cave and Cars Coordinator with the Forest Service, but I have to say I spent eight years with the Park Service and I remember working with Dan on Cave Week. So this is fantastic to see it grow. Um, and to now have Nickery take over the management, I think, you know, we have a, a lot to do, but I think it's growing and it's going to be fantastic. Okay, um, so what is Cave Week? So I think the way that I wanted to share this to, it's more like what, when, who, and what. So like Dan mentioned, Cave Week provides us with the opportunity to celebrate and learn about caves. This year, it's going to be celebrated on June 2nd to the 8th. So mark your calendars. And if I'm not wrong, then I think this is our eighth year. Um, I was waiting to see if you had that. Um, everyone is invited to join. You don't have to be a caver or a cave manager um, or an enthusiast. We want everybody to be part of the celebration. And the focus of Cave Week is on keeping cars their importance, geology, history, biology, current research, exploration, restoration, and promoting other sites across the US, Canada, and the world. So why should people care about caves and caves environments? And I think for this audience, it's something that to us makes sense and we don't really have to explain it, but for others that are new to the cave world, um, we should emphasize these things. So caves are sensitive environment that serve as habitat for li many living creatures. They preserve our past and provide opportunities for the advancement of science and research. They also provide recreational opportunities for millions of people each year. And cars aquifers, which caves are part of, some caves, they're a vital source of drinking water for people around the world. So who is our audience? 
the organizers, it will be you. Probably you're in this call because you're planning Cape Week for June. So Cape managers, land managers, partners, interpretive staff, and people who want to share their knowledge and love of caves and cars. And who is our target audience? So people who recreate outside, people that live near caves, people that are fans of caves, they work in caves, including paleontologists, geoscientists, bad biologists, geologists, hydrologists, biologists, historians, and much more. People that want to interact with caves and people that anyone that is curious and wants to learn more. So our objectives are to share that caves are unique and sensitive environments, and in some cases, non-renewable, that cave science is multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. There's so many things that happen in caves that only one science cannot cover or study. They provide opportunities for recreation and exploration, and they're interconnected with our environment. Whatever we do in the subsurface, in the surface can affect the subsurface. So we have to take that into consideration. So how can you join the celebration? You can use the hashtag cave week when you're using social media. During cave week, share about caves, examples of cars or pseudo cars, resources, experiences, share about recreational and conservation opportunities, Host an event that highlights caves. You can do a graffiti cleanup or a lint cleanup at your cave. Share your work with caves and learn where your water comes from and inspire other people to learn where their water comes from. You can also visit a show cave in person or virtually. There are opportunities for people to do caves that are completely virtual. You can watch your favorite cave or caving movie. You can look up your local grotto and cave conservancy and join the grotto and go caving with them. You can also eat your favorite cave related food or bat dependent food. And I hear tequila, it's a bat dependent food. So you might be able to have a margarita. Read your favorite cave book or bat related book. So the key messaging, caves contain unique sensitive resources, such as pilotums and fossils, human artifacts, and cave adapted species and water. And if you think about speleothems and fossils, if we lose this information, if somebody take a speleothem or a fossil, we're losing information, we're never, or even artifacts, we're never going to be able to recreate on our lifetime. They provide recreational opportunities to millions of people, and caves are connected to karst aquifers, and these aquifers are vital sources of drinking water for people around the world. And so here are some examples of educational resources that you can use for the celebration. The Park Service has the Junior Cave Scientist Program, which is in English and Spanish, and it's a great program that educators can use and even adults to learn more about caves. There's also the Caves Live um, program, which has free lessons plans, videos, and educational programs for K to 12. And then the Natural Inquirer, which is a scientific journal for caves, and there is a Cave on Cars edition. And with that, I'll pass it to Tommy so he can share more information about cave awareness. All right, working on it. Can you see my screen? We can, but it's not in presenter mode. Yeah, working on that. There we go. Now we and can, let yes. me change that. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Hey everybody, uh, my name's Tommy Inebnet. I'm a biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service. I work out of the Arkansas Ecological Services Field Office. Uh, today I get to talk to you about what we can do as cavers and cave managers and interpreters um, to bring awareness to some of the critters that occur in caves as well as um, how we can do our best to protect them while we're communicating well, in general but also while we're in communicating uh, with folks during cave week um, also including what it means to cave in the era of, of white nose syndrome 
Um, how I want to start is to maybe talk about the what I think is the primary driving force behind the passion that people have for caves, and that's the question of what's in there, right? You know, what you know. So some people might have interest in uh, how deep a cave goes, or others might have interest in how awesome formations or that they might be able to find some awesome formations, but others like myself have a passion for knowing what kind of cave adaptive animals uh, live in these unique and sensitive environments. So here's a few. Um, before we get to the most notable of cave dwelling animals, you know, the bat, I like to take a minute just to put a spotlight on some other very interesting critters. And again, these are just a few, obviously there's a whole, whole lot of them out there. Um, but this page is full of some really cool cave adaptive animals ranging from cave crayfish cave fish and cave shrimp, salamanders, pseudoscorpions, springtails, and spiders. Um, now, I don't care who you are. If you can't get excited about pseudoscorpions and cave shrimp, and that's right, a cave-adapted shrimp, um, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you because, you know, everything about these specialized and secretive animals, it's just amazing from their appearance to their life history traits. Um, so as responsible cavers, we want to ensure that we're aware of these unique and, and sensitive uh, subterranean species. So how do you do that? Uh, well, my recommendation would be to try to start learning about how you or what you have in your cave. You might consider taking time to move slow and look in places where these small organisms might be hiding, like under rocks, organic debris, guano deposits, or in water sources. You might also want to take a step further and organize a structured bio inventory of your site. Uh, reach out to your local cave biologist to get some help. If you don't know one, because they're pretty specialized and there's not just a, a large number of them out there, um, then check with your cave and cars contact with your local agency and they should be able to steer you in the right direction to try to find a cave biology expert, which in some cases may be necessary because uh, when it comes to these critters, you know, there's difficulties in locating them and definitely accurately identifying what they are because they're so unique. Um, so once you have an idea of what's in your cave, then the recommendation and the messaging there would be to be cognizant of, of where some of these sensitive uh, species are located and do your best to tread lightly. So for example, if you know a particular pool in a stream passage that typically has a cave crayfish in it, then maybe consider either staying completely out of that uh, or if necessary, move very slow through it to ensure that you don't step on one. Another example would be organic materials like wood or leaf clusters or even guano uh, deposits. Uh, these typically support a lot of cave life and if possible, try to avoid you know, stomping through them and potentially harming uh, some of those small fragile critters uh, that depend on that habitat type to live. And then that brings us to bats. Uh, again, probably the most um, known cave adaptive animal out there and for good reason. They're big compared to most other cave fauna. They're charismatic. And they play a vital role in not only cave ecosystems, but provi uh, by providing a food source for a significant amount of cave adapted critters. But they also contribute significantly to pest control by coming out and eating flying insects every night. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I got pollens getting my throat. Um, and in the eating those insects every night, now that's that's a lot, right? I mean, we, we've all heard the stories about the hundreds, of thousands of insects that each individual bat will eat on an average night. I'm gonna take a second. And let's try to think about the effect of not having bats on the landscape. The picture on the left is taken inside Fern Cave in Northeast Alabama during a hibernacula survey. Now granted, this is a hibernaculum and these bats aren't all coming out every night and foraging at this particular site, but because, because they're hibernating. But could you imagine if something were to happen to this hibernating colony? Um, which by the way is the largest known gray bat hibernacula for the species with around 1.3 million bats uh, that hibernate there every year. But it would be devastating not only to the species existence, because that's a lot of bats and a very important site, but also to its ability to act as a pest control for us. So that one colony, one on the landscape during the summer, has the capacity to remove over a billion insects in a single night. Throughout the active season, that can equal up to two 100 billion insects and that's just in one year and one colony so think about that that's it's pretty that's pretty significant and there's thankfully multiple other bat species out there and millions of other individual bats flying around but to me that helps put into perspective the importance of these flying mammals and why we should care about protecting them so what are we protecting them from well, our currently federally listed bats have been listed under the Endangered Species Act due to either 
in cave disturbances and loss of cave habitat, or more recently due to white nose syndrome. So first and foremost, let's do our best to avoid disturbing bat colonies or even individual bats in caves, especially when they're trying to hibernate or when they form maternity colonies with their pups. And what does avoidance look like? I mean, it can look like it potentially restricting access to certain caves, that's, that's possible, um, or just restricting access to certain portions of a cave during a certain time of year, or simply just moving quickly and quietly through a passage that, that have bats in them. Um, I would recommend reaching out to your local state or local Fish and Wildlife Service office for recommendations if you are unsure of what the best method is to try to avoid disturbance to these bats um, at your particular site. And then of course, there's white nose syndrome, which is a disease that affects hibernating bats and is caused by a fungus, uh, pseudogenoasis destructans, or PD for short. Uh, sometimes PD you know, has that white fuzz on the bat's face, uh, which is how the disease got its name, white nose syndrome. In short, PD grows in cold, dark, and damp places. It attacks the bare skin of bats when, while they're hibernating, which can make them become active more than usual and burn up fat that they need uh, to survive their winter. Uh, so just real quick, I want to go through the spread of white nose. Uh, most of us have seen this before, um, but as you can see on the screen, it started um, in 2006, 2007, it started in Northeast uh, U.S. And roughly 10 years later, you can see the spread uh, has, has grown quite a bit, a, even a big jump out to uh, Washington State. And the addition of, of more species that uh, have been found with WNS. And then this is uh, one of our most recent maps showing the spread that you know has has spread significantly, uh, including uh, further up into uh, north into Canada, as well as taking a much bigger hold into the Midwest and, and the West Coast, and and uh, even more uh, species. So what do we do? Uh, well, from the Fish and Wildlife Service perspective, uh, which is in part why I'm here today, is to encourage clean caving by using decontamination protocols. Uh, we encourage clean caving by using decontamination uh, protocols that have been developed with, uh, in cooperation with partners. Um, and they've worked to provide um, the most up-to-date decom protocols by using the best available science. Uh, these protocols can be found at the link shown here on the, on the page, uh, but it's also found at whitenosyndrome.org, uh, uh, the website there. Um, and in fact, if you haven't been there recently, I would recommend downloading, going there and downloading the protocols now because uh, this is a new updated version of the protocols that was released last week or last month, as you can see on the screen um, showing March of 2024. So for the protocols, you know, the purpose of this document is, sorry, little thing moved on me. Uh, the purpose of this document is to provide scientifically supported procedures known to effectively clean and treat our gear uh, when activities involve contact with exposure to bats, their environments, or associated materials, and following the decom procedures for equipment will reduce the risk of human-assisted transmission of the fungus to other bats and or habits. Um, I've also provided a snapshot of the uh, changes that were recently made in the latest edition of the protocols. But for me, the take home message for white nose syndrome and implementing the decon, decon protocols is pretty simple. I believe we all have a collective interest and responsibility to try to protect our bats. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service asks that you simply do the best you can to implement decon protocols based on each unique caving situation that you're in because they're all different, right? I mean, you could be caving in a location surrounded by WNS, or you could be caving in an area that hasn't found it yet. You might be in a stream-filled stream -filled limestone system or crawling through a lava tube. You might be on a multi-day expedition or just on a 15-minute walk in and out of the cave. So again, we just ask that you do your best to encourage and celebrate caving while also doing it responsibly and safely. And um, please reach out to us if you have any any questions that we can that we can assist with on that on that front? And I don't know that we're taking questions right now, but thanks for your time, and uh, let me know if I can if I can do anything for you. Thank you, Tommy and Lima, for 
uh, getting into ways of how to celebrate caves and also getting into how to cave safely. Um, we're going to pass it off to Jennifer Young here from the National Speleological Society and Kyle Voiles from the Bureau of Land Management on how to get into caving if you want to go caving. And I will add that if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end of this presentation. Well, first I wanna say how exciting it is to be on a call with so many people who are so passionate about caves and caving. This is like my favorite place to be. Um, I'm Jennifer Young. I'm a social media representative from the NSS, uh, which is the National Speleological Society. Uh, many of you on the call are probably familiar with us, uh, but we're a nonprofit that's dedicated to the study and protection of caves through conservation, ownership, stewardship, and public education, as well as promoting responsible cave exploration and fellowship among those interested in caves. That's a huge mouthful. I'm going to break it down a little bit, but try and be uh, a little bit quick through it. Um, so one of the one of the first things that we offer in a way to go caving is uh, every year we do the NSS National Convention, which is a week long event that brings cavers together from all over the world. So it's a great way to meet people from all over the place. Um, this year we'll be in Swanee, Tennessee, and we'll have cave workshops, sessions, field trips, cave trips, and more. Um, the workshop sessions and field trips will be on things like vertical caving and all of the ologies, geology, hydrology, speleolo speleology, um, biology, archaeology, diving, surveying, photography, and a lot of other things. Um, it is a full week. If you're not up for caving all week, like some of us are, there's also a ton of amazing hiking in the area, and you can even paddle out on the lake at dusk to watch the bats fly out from Nickajack Cave, which is a really magical experience. Highly recommend it. Um, so if you want to learn more about convention, you can go to caves.org slash convention. There are also a bunch of local and regional events you can go to to meet other cavers and to go caving. Um, these are essentially all caving festivals where we party and host vendors, have caving competitions like rope climbs or the squeeze box. Of course, go on caving trips and just in general have a really good time. Uh, some of the ones that are coming up are Spring and VOR, Spring Bar, Spring Mar, Spelio Fest, Carcerama, Western Regional, and my personal favorite as a tag caver is Tag Fall Caven. Um, so check those out. Those are also up on our website at caves.org slash events. The uh, NSS is also a great place to find what your local grotto is. Um, what is a grotto? Some people on the call may know what this is, some may not. Usually when you hear of grotto, you think of like Florida spring type area. Um, but we also call our local caving chapters grottos and they're a really amazing way to go caving. Um, whether you're just starting out or whether you've already been underground for a while, grottos are still an awesome way to meet other cavers, learn new skills, and also hear about upcoming caving trips. So you can find your local grotto by there's a theme here, caves.org. Um, go to caves.org and uh, click on that drop down menu for Go Caving, where you can see Find a Grotto and navigate down to where your state is. Uh, some uh, things that we offer members are gear discounts. We partner with major brands like Intermountain Outfitters, On Rope One, and Highline, as well as unlock special deals on Expert Voice which is a platform for brands like Garmin, Mamut, Oakley, Columbia, Mountain Hardware, Merrill, Stanley, Keen, Cotopaxi, and a lot of other awesome brands um, to get, engage with outdoor experts. We also offer grants for members and partners. Uh, members and partners can apply for exploration, scientific, and education grants that we give out every year. The picture on the slide shows CaveSim, which I think was mentioned by somebody a little bit earlier. Um, it's a cave on wheels with over 60 feet of tunnels to explore and has been a recipient of some education grants from the NSS so that cave sim can be brought to local schools. So that's one thing you can do with grants. Speaking of education, we also have a ton of educational resources for cavers. Um, some ones that I'll call out here are we have discounts on National Cave Rescue Commission events. Um, we also have access on our website through caves.org slash education to different publications and also the NSS bookstore. 
And the NSS also has uh, some cave preserves that they own. We own 19 cave preserves, and we also help manage four other preserves uh, through a memorandum of understanding. Um, and we're we're so excited to be able to help protect these unique and special underground places for future generations and for uh, cave, cavers and others who are interested in visiting them. So if you'd like to visit a preserve or learn more about them, caves.org slash preserves. And also your membership dollars are supporting all of these activities. So that money is going straight into helping manage cave preserves, uh, sponsoring scientific programs, giving out grants, and all of the other activities that we do. So if you're interested in anything that I've talked about, or if you know of anybody who's interested in anything that we've talked about, um, go to caves.org to become a member of the NSS. You can either go directly to our homepage and go up on the upper right-hand corner to join us, um, or you can go to caves.org slash join us. And thank you so much to everybody on the call for, uh, for letting NSS be a part of this. I'm so excited to see what we do with Cave Week moving forward. And now I'll hand it over to Kyle. Uh, we're actually gonna head it over to Devra here. Kyle had to step out. So we're gonna pass it to Devra real quick. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about more specifically different cave resor um, resources that we have for Cave Week. Um, but um, since I'm going to actually start a, a slightly different segue because as one of the resources we do have, let me share my screen. Is um, there is an announcement that just literally happened yesterday. So I'm going to start there with the Cave Animal of the Year being announced officially. So, which is another NSS thing. So the um, Cave Animal of the Year, if you can see my screen, is the Northern Cave Fish. This will be in the toolkit. The information will be on the toolkit that Grace and I will be going over. But if you wanna find out more uh, about the, um, the USA Cave Animal of the Year, um, it is on the NSS web page right now. And so I will go back, um, talk more about that later of how you can find that information. But it's the Northern Cave Fish. And the other thing I would like to talk about is how, if you want to find out more information next year or any previous of uh, any years, um, including this, um, this video, we will have this video up on Nickery's YouTube channel. I will be sending it out via the mailing list through um, through our partners. But if you go to Nickery's web website, I'm gonna show you. And we actually are building a Cave Week, a separate Cave Week website. We have the URL already, but as you probably know, building websites takes a little while. So right now we just have a link to Cave Week for the mailing list and the sign up form. When you sign up, it takes us also to um, a link to the um, toolkit. But um, we did buy caveweek.org and we're hoping in the next six months to build out that website. So hopefully all these resources, instead of being a, a Google Drive link will all be on the website so people have more access to this. And then the other thing I wanna share with you is an expansion of what Lima was talking about, which is the communications plan. I know I'm zooming through all this. Let me pull that up. So this is also in the Cave Week toolkit. Is this tool, um, this communications plan. And so all the, the verbiage that Lima presented, that is all in this communications plan. So if you need help explaining to others what Cave, is, Cave Week is, the background, why it's important, all that is in there. But I'm gonna go further down. So we, again, talking about the history. And if you need, it's a nice resource of where you can um, get suggestions because we want you to do, to share, your point of view from your cave, the caves that you interact with, your love, 
but this way it's just to make it a little easier. So these are just examples. These are resources. There's a whole toolkit, toolkit that Grace will go over and what things are already in there. If you want to share anything that you have to with others, you can email us at info at, K, um, at Nickery. And I'll put this in the chat. Um, so info at nickery.org. And as I said, um, we will eventually be having a caveweek.org email. So all that is in development. The best part about this, this is also the link, um, the, some shareable links, including the Cave Animal of the Year. This also has all the caves lives, um, the longest and deepest caves of the world, some of the other um, uh, partnerships. So for instance, the Junior Cave Scientist links are all in here. So it just gives us really beautiful one-stop um, one shop to get all that information. And if you have more things to share, this is a living, breathing document you can add, and we are more than happy to add more things to this. And of course we have Bat Week, BCI. So um, our new WNS protocol link is right in there too. So if you have problems finding anything, look on this co um, communications plan, that should help you. This also has the links for what Grace will be talking about with our different templates. I do want to talk about a little bit um, about the media guidelines. Uh, Grace will talk a little more about this, but again, it's a reminder with the hashtags, things to um, be considerate of with photo descriptions, with our land managers, making sure that um, you're following their wishes with dealing with cave names and being sensitive to cave names and cave locations. And again, when in doubt, talk to the land manager. Most of you are the land manager. But when you're working with your outreach people, like this is a nice document to help them and um, making sure that they are using images that show correct PPE and correct behavior in, um, in caves. This also gives you an idea of some facts that might also help you. So we have facts about archeology, span biology, conservation, paleontology, just things that maybe can help you in some links to help you come up with your own um, media plan and event plan. And uh, with that, I'm going to go and pass it to Grace and she's going to show you where some of these other resources are. Hi everyone, my name is Grace Braver and I'm a scientist in the parks with the Geologic Resources Division of the National Parks and I'm very excited to be here and guide you through some of these resources. So I'm going to share my entire screen so that I can easily switch through tabs rather than just one single tab. So when you sign up in the form that Deborah went over, you'll gain access to Cave Week Toolkit. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much for that confirmation before we get any further. So when you enter the Cave Week Toolkit, there's going to be two additional folders. One's going to say resources and one will say social media guide. We'll start with the resources. And then there's a bunch more folders. So you have logos, readings, diagrams, GIFs you can read on your own. I'm just going to draw your attention to a couple of these because I'm sure you don't want me to click on every single link here with you. Um, but some that I wanted to make sure we get to is the diagrams. And there's some diagrams about how different things in caves work. Um, these could be posted, shared to social media, generally distributed. They're really wonderful to help explain different scientific processes that we see in the caves in a really easily digestible manner with a lot of pictures and some words to help go along with those. So this is the permeability one. And you can see these graphics are just great indicating water is coming through and how that water would move on through the different types of sediment. And we'll do one more, we'll do chimney effect. So another great resource on how the chimney effect works in caves and how you get cold caves and warm caves based on the surface temperatures.
So we'll go back out to resources. And next, I want to bring your attention to online resources. This is where the comments that you guys are making um, alongside the chat are probably going to be put on this as well, just so we can have them all, because it is wonderful. Let's start with the online resources. Okay. So here we just have some topics, a description, which is really, really helpful. Of course, the link and how it could be used. So this one will definitely get bigger. Uh, another one that I think is really awesome is the cave education links. Again, it's still under online resources but there's the website title, website link, organization it belongs to, and the topic. It's really helpful to include what kind of target audience you have or age group. So if you know you're working with kids, you can go and filter kind of by the K through 12 or even more specifically like middle school or elementary school or just the general public ones. So one that I looked into earlier is following water movement using dye tracing. So when we talk about dye tracing, I know you probably communicated with the public and they're like, oh my gosh, you're dumping a bunch of dye that doesn't seem safe. So this is a really good step-by-step -step instructional of why we do it, how is it going to be helpful to the park and why it's protected with pictures and different studies. And there's dozens of different resources like this explaining a lot of different sciencey things we do in caves or just the enjoyment of caves such as the caving podcast by Matt Pelsor. There's lots of bat resources. It's really really awesome. You can definitely spend a good chunk of time tooling through all of these resources. We'll do one more. We'll do Carlsbad real quick just because we've been pointing at it so much, I suppose, this talk. But just talking about geodiversity again, this was another National Parks Service resource. I'm getting an easily digestible information about paleontology and geology and all of the lovely ologies that go along with caves in their studies. We'll close out of these guys. Another fun thing in this Cave Week toolkit under resources, and then again under online resources, is the virtual tours. So this is a folder that leads to a spreadsheet, and it has a bunch of different tours from around the world of different caves. So if you can't physically go to the cave, um, or you're not quite sure if you're ready to go to a cave, you can still learn about them and feel immersed in different caves. So I went ahead and loaded a video so you wouldn't have to look at an advertisement. You could just see kind of what it would look like if you were to play one of these. And I did opt for the sound off just because sound on YouTube videos rarely works for me. But again, it just kind of makes you feel like you're in the cave, walking through it, explaining a little bit, looking at the maps and where you're at and guides you through the cave as if you were really there. It's also a great tool to make caving more accessible to the general public. Spectacular. All right. But yeah, there is tons of other caving videos from virtual tours to just general field trips where you can just do a, a formation room. Um, they don't all have to be complete walkthroughs of the cave, but these are a really awesome resource that I hope to see more of in the near future. And finally, on that communications plan that Deborah was talking about, we have some social media posts available for 2024 that we've updated with beautiful logos for Cave Week and colors. So I'm really excited to show you all this. So we can click on these links. It'll take you to our Canva templates. I believe I can make this big. Yeah. 
And it's just a bunch of different social media posts that we have, we being Raquel, another SIP who wasn't able to join us today, and myself and Deborah have been working on uh, from the logos to the images. But these are meant to be uh, plug and chug, I suppose, if you will, where you can find a design and input your own information about caves and celebrating caves. Um, or you can use what's already there. It's meant to be easy, an easy process for you. But we have some that are more picture-based of people in caves and looking at the different cave formations. And then we have some that are more like this where they're graphics-based, talking about caves and the delicate environments and the different critters you can see in caves, sinkholes, and these are our beautiful logos, if you see. Some of them have different colors, too, depending on which theme you want to go with. These are critters. Raquel is a wonderful wizard with the drawing tool. So she actually drew most all of these little critters herself. I'm going to... So you put your own caves. We really wanted to focus on the brightness of caves and the bright colors in caves um, because they're oftentimes, you know, depicted as dark and they are dark, but the color palette inside them is really beautiful and bright in many of them, at least. So really focused on bringing that out. And then here's a picture of a graphic image where you could kind of just put in your own text. We have the fonts preloaded um, to keep everything the same. Uh, and you could just add whatever you want and another rendition of that beautiful logo, Cave Week, that Deborah worked very, very hard on. Uh, and we made it so it looks kind of like a vertical <laughs> drop into a cave with that color between the A and the V and the W. We, this was really her brainchild. <laughs> Credit where credit's due. I want to get to the end. Yeah. These are the guys I was looking for, where it's just a general cave. It looks like you're in the inside looking out. Um, and you could, again, add whatever kinds of text you think is appropriate to represent you and your industry with caves. And again, I just think it's really important to bring this up one more time, and then I'll hand it on over, is just being mindful of the images you're using with caves. I know everybody's professional is here, so it probably goes without saying, but just, you know, the appropriate PPE, making sure everybody has gloves on, um, and then also making sure people can see themselves in the photos, being mindful, you know, that you get a good spread of the people who are in it. But that is what I have to share for you. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Grace. And thank you, Deborah, for sharing all that great information. Uh, we'd love to open up the floor here for some Q&A. And if you do have Q&A after this meeting that was not able to be asked, um, we do have some links here put in by Jennifer for the NSS and then also uh, for Nickery by Devra as well. So uh, does anyone have questions uh, about anything that has been presented today? I, I do have a question about sharing this. So, um, you know, is it it's best to share, you said, to your YouTube channel? It's, okay, okay. So we'll try to get that shared next week. Um, I don't know if maybe Bob Holt, the NCA Executive Director, is on vacation, but um, I want to get it out as soon as I can. And I want to thank Deborah and everybody else that had a hand in that artwork because I knew the templates last year. I used them all summer long. I kept using them. And so I really appreciate it. I'm not an artist, but I can, you know, put cave pictures into anything. So it was, it was really awesome. Yeah. And just to clarify, um, any of the diagrams are in the toolkit since they were made um, by Nickery. So right. it, it falls under fair use. So if you're right. not selling those images and you're giving credit, you can use them for any educational purposes. So same thing with the templates. And so feel free to use them. We're just trying to make it easy for you. Um, for everyone who's involved, 
to and that's why we spent so much time create um, creating this document yeah. i'll probably add some more instructions on using canva because they're you just need to make your own copy and add your um your own text so i can i ask jennifer a question please so what what does the does the nss do something specifically to um, celebrate Cave Week or um, yes, no. Uh, so we're going to be using uh, the same social media resources okay. um, that okay. have been developed for this presentation. And we'll also, we'll end up sending out some social media to our grottos that we're affiliated okay. with and other partners to also help get them involved, um, well, similar okay. to others on the line. Okay. But we're yeah. open to input. If somebody wants to see something specific from the NSS, like we're here to serve our members and to serve the caving community. So if there's something specific anybody wants to see, let me know and I'll send it up the food chain. Yeah, so I manage an NSS preserve. So I guess I just um thinking about that um, because it's one of those preserves that's so well known that, um you know, cleanup of graffiti and trash is a constant job. And so, you know, I, I, I mean, certainly for, you know, my show cave, we do a lot of education and we will use the cave week stuff as much as possible. I'm just not sure how much I want to promote that, but hopefully get some local media involved to promote cave week as a whole. And that that will translate to people visiting the cave, you know, the permit system doesn't work very well at this cave property, but, but well, we try. We would, we would love to help you promote, um, promote your, your show cave and doing a cleanup. So if you want to reach out to me, I put my contact information in the okay. chat. Okay. Um, I'll try and get you connected with uh, some local resources and some local grottos that can. Well, I work with all the local grottos. So, you know, okay. that's fine. I have for a lifetime so that, that's not a problem so no I don't really need a cleanup actually we do have the picture that I'm in my background picture is a part of our cave that is not open to the public obviously it's just so fragile but we have a cleanup going on on in there right now with with some cavers so um well, we'd love I have, to help you promote promote yeah. your cave during cave week um, and anything that you want to share about your cave during cave week, you're welcome to send that to me and um, I can start throwing stuff up on social media. And I have, I have one um, kind of crazy question. I just thought about it during this conversation, all the conversations we've had previously. Have we thought about maybe in the future as like Earth Science Week does a theme every day, just something to throw out there that's for the future. And if anybody's thought about that or not. Well, I mean, it's growing every year. Um, that's something we can definitely look into. Um, yeah. But right now we're just trying to get people to participate. One of the things that um, I'm hoping to gather this year. So um, after Cave Week, I will be sending a message out to everybody. Some of you might be getting it through your um, one of your partners about how did you celebrate and some feedback. It'll be like a short um, five, maybe 10 minute, depending on how thorough your answers are, just how you did, ended up celebrating to give us feedback and what resources you need. And actually at the end of this call, I have a, a very short um, multiple choice question poll, if you guys can um, stay on to do it, just to see again, feedback about what we can do to do things better and, um, and for us to provide better resources for everybody. Do we have any more questions from folks who are attending this webinar? Well, if there are no All more right. questions, can I give you guys the, the poll real quick? I'm going to take that as a yes. Yep. So, so if you guys all have a, take a moment, feel free to, um, to answer these questions. And if you, um, 
And while that is going on, um, anyone have any um, closing statements? I would just like to thank everybody uh, for getting to this point. Um, like I said before, I just started out as myself in 2018 and we're about seven years in here and uh, it's, it's grown to this magnitude, which is absolutely fantastic. And I can't wait to see how it grows in the future. So thank you very much, everybody, for participating uh, in, in Cave Week in whatever fashion that you can. We'll just stay on for a little bit so you guys can fill out the poll. And I'm going to stop the recording. And this should be up, um, up and out to everybody next week.